All right, so the montage that you're about to watch was filmed with the iPhone 14 Pro Max. <laughs> you said it, she's whispering it, but you said it. Say hi, YouTube. All right, so what do you guys think about that montage? Did it just look like hands down garbage cell phone footage, or did it look like passable? Like, could you see yourself starting a YouTube channel or making, you know, social media content with just an iPhone 14 Pro? Let me know down below if you think this is good footage, bad footage, or if it could replace a real camera. Um, is it a real camera? Let me know. All right, so to give you guys a quick rundown on that montage that you just watched and give you some insight on how I filmed it, uh, essentially Brady came and picked me up for the shoot and I decided to film a quick montage with the iPhone. I did everything handheld and it was filmed in Filmic Pro uh, using the cinematic stabilization and the natural color profile. And then in post, I added some film and film looks through motion VFX. But overall, I think it turned out pretty good. When I was first playing it back on the phone and looking over the footage I was like man I don't know if I can save this this is gonna look probably trash <laughs> but when I imported it into Final Cut you know uh threw all the sauce on it and edited it up a little bit, had the endpoints and out, out points, um, and kind of like stitched it together. It did start to come together for me and then it really came to life when I added the sound design. Um, but overall, I think it's pretty passable. Oh, and another thing, I actually filmed everything at 48 frames per second. Uh, I actually liked 48 frames per second because it's not too slow, like 60 FPS when you slow that down. 48 frames per second when you slow it down two times, it's just a nice subtle slow motion and then we speed it up two times, it's right back to 24 frames per second and it's real time. So 48 frames per second is what I filmed all that footage in. Also another point, I actually may get some more text footage in cinematic mode now that we have 4K24 um, and compare that to the FX9 or really just in general, just to, just to see what 4K24 looks like in cinematic mode with the depth of field, the artificial bokeh that they have. Um, but I wanted to film everything at 48 frames per second for one, because I wanted the slow motion and I can't do that in cinematic mode and correct me if I'm wrong I don't believe you can get ProRes in cinematic mode either so I chose to do Filmic Pro for this montage but I will definitely be getting more footage in cinematic mode in 24 frames per second because I'm also curious what that looks like. So I've had the iPhone 14 Pro Max since launch. I pre-ordered it at the crack of ass at 9 a.m. on the 9th when it picked it up on the 16th and I've been using it ever since. And I have some a few thoughts about, you know, the camera and the video footage and um, also, you know, just the other few features that they just added to the iPhone Pro. So over the weekend, I set out to go to downtown LA with a couple friends, Brady and Aaron, two phenomenal photographers and content creators in their own right and I or we decided to take some photos and compare these photos to our current photo cameras you know I have I use the a7 III for photos Brady uses the uh, Fujifilm HX2S I think that's the name of it the new Fuji camera and Aaron uses the EOS R and we all you know get paid for different gigs to do photography and videography and we wanted to see how the iPhone stacks up against all of our cameras. All right, so quick disclaimer, everyone's talking about the new 48 megapixel sensor on the iPhone 14 Pro, but one thing to consider, or a few things to consider when you're looking at these photos, is that anything that you're looking at in ultra wide or in the telephoto is gonna be 12 megapixels, and anything that's in the 1X, you know, natural focal length for the iPhone 14 Pro, which is like 24 mil, is gonna be at 40 megapixels. When you crop in the 2X, which is equivalent to like a 50 mil, is also gonna be 12 megapixels. So. Uh, when we're pixel peeping, keep that in mind. Now, all the images that you're seeing on screen aren't straight out of camera. I did do some editing in post because I wanted to take the angle of someone that's really using the iPhone for, for, for professional work, right? If you're looking to use your iPhone uh, for paid work or to, to create content, you want the most latitude in post as possible. So you're going to be shooting in raw. Um, 
and you're going to be editing it, right? You're going to import it to Lightroom. You might be using, um, you know, Darkroom on your phone, uh, different editing apps uh, that you can use on your iPad or your phone or on your computer. And you're going to want the most information as possible. So you're probably going to be shooting raw. And what I noticed that in raw, you're actually able to get a lot of good information in the colors uh, and the highlights still. Uh, there's a lot of information that's preserved. The biggest benefits um, to the iPhone camera is raw shooting. Uh, when you're shooting it raw, it doesn't do a lot of the artificial sharpening. You get a much softer, more pleasing image, something that looks a bit more professional in my opinion, that looks less digital and less smartphone-y. Um, and raw is really the king. And it's been the king since the iPhone 13 Pro uh, that was announced you know, last year. And it's still shining right now. When it comes to iPhone photography, I'm either blown away or I'm like, ah, uh, that looks like an iPhone photo. <laughs> like there's really no in between. Uh, and a lot of these shots I was pretty, pretty stunned by. All right, so here's my summary of the iPhone camera. All right, iPhone photos either blow me away or Mm, they just look like cell phone pictures. <laughs> um, and it really just comes down to your composition, the lighting, and how you edit the photos. And those things are the intangibles that you know aren't on the spec sheet, right? Um, it comes down to you as a, as a creator. I do believe that you can use an iPhone for professional work uh, when it comes to you know creating content for social media youtube uh you know iphones can replace your camera when it comes to those mediums right um if you're doing anything in like print uh or you know if you want your images to, to stand the test of time and you know be manipulated in post and still retain all of their quality uh then you want to go with the dedicated camera um the 48 megapixels on the iphone I will say did add a little bit of sharpness from what I've seen in the past, but to be honest, cell phone images are always uh, sharpened in post in camera anyway. So everything looks sharp anyway. And you'll notice that from a lot of the videos that you see, it's videos I've seen, I've noticed that from Tyler Stallman, um, from Brady, from a lot of people out there. And the, the, they compare the 13 Pro to the 14 Pro and the images look very similar. <laughs> and that's mostly because iPhone has the science down, right? They have the uh, computational photography down, the software down, all that is consistent across phones. And the hardware, I don't believe we'll really see or reap the benefits or the rewards of the hardware uh, for a while. I think a uh, 48 megapixel sensor just increases the ceiling for Apple to incorporate better computational photography that have more information at their disposal to add more features in the future and ultimately make your photography experience better. It's been a crazy month. I've been super busy uh, filming client projects, uh, you know, doing regular work, producing content for JFL, um, living life, being a dad, uh, finding time to decompress and manage my mental health. Uh, and man, I'm so happy to just be uploading the video so that way you guys can watch it. Um, if you guys made it this far into the video, I appreciate you as usual. Thank you guys. You guys are the blood of this channel, the lifeblood of this channel, keeping me going. Uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, if you guys like this content, feel free to subscribe and look forward to the next video. But until next time, guys, it's been a pleasure. Stay fresh.